He didn't say go after them, attack them, judge them. Comfort them. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. And be patient toward all men. Notice how he's talking about the church, but he's also talking about those that are not in church. As a matter of fact, I think the church is more patient with the people that are not in church than with the people in church. I think that we think that people are in church ought to know better, and so we don't have the same kind of patience. So he said be patient with everybody. See that no evil, no, do not render evil for evil unto any man. So just because they're evil and they're doing evil to you doesn't give you the right to be evil. He says, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So not just the church members, but to everybody. Do that which is good. Can you say amen? And let me just kind of close it out here. Rejoice, everyone. For every more, forevermore, and pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, and despise not prophecy. Hallelujah, or prophesying. Heavenly Father, we ask once again that you help me tonight. Help your church. Help your people. Lord, let them have a a heart to receive, ears to hear, an open spirit. Lord, to be able to receive what you're telling us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Say amen, and you may be seated. Amen. So we are going to be talking about Prayer, the habit of prayer, not just prayer, but the habit of prayer. He's talking about praying consistently, constantly. He's talking about not stop praying. And so as he talks about exhorting one another, encouraging one another, warn the unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward everybody. And render not evil to anybody. And follow that which is good among yourselves and to everybody. And rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And in everything give thanks. We've got to learn that. And then he says, quench not the spirit. And despise not the prophecies or the sayings of the word of God. The King James Version translate our text, pray without ceasing. But in the Living Bible, it paraphrases it and says, always keep praying. That's what it means. Always keep praying. Now, he's not talking about going in a cave and not ever working or eating again or socializing again and and, and going into a cave and, and separating yourself from the world and just always pray. He's not talking about that kind of always praying. He's talking about praying in your mind. He's talking about praying, you know, in your closet. He's talking about taking time to pray uh, in your car or wherever you can, but always praying. Having a, maybe even when you're walking, you're not praying out loud, but in your mind you're praying. So Paul is informing the dear disciples of the church that they need to develop a habit of prayer and to never break that habit. Keep it. It's for you. Yes, God created us to have fellowship with Him. That's what prayer is. But you need it more than God needs it. Jesus told His disciples in a parable this way, Luke 18.1, it says, You ought to always pray and not lose heart. Ought to always pray and not lose heart. It is the will of God. It is the will of our Heavenly Father that we form a consistent habit of prayer and then not break it. For the good of our own spiritual lives. Yes, it's good for God because it's fellowship. But for your spiritual life, you need to learn how to pray consistently. 
He said, it's for you, it's for the kingdom of heaven, it's for the kingdom of God. Because when you pray and you've got things right, you're going to affect the world. You're going to affect others. You're going to enhance the kingdom because of your constant prayer. Now, he's not implying that we should assume some religious pose. We don't need to be like this all day long, every day. It's good to do that, but that's not what he's implying. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying to have that spirit of prayer no matter what you're doing. Hey, it's great if you can bow down on your knees and you can pray and you can find a closet, but you can't always do that. (coughs) So he said we need not to enter a cave separate ourselves from the world and never be seen again because we're always praying. The head of KFC, the CEO, called the Pope up. He said, I'll give you a million dollars to change the Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily chicken. The Pope said no and hung up. KFC CEO called back, offering him $10 million. The Pope said no and hung up again. KFC called back one more time, said, we'll give you $100 million to change it to chicken. The Pope said, you got a deal. So the Pope called all the churches and all the bigwigs. He says, I have some good news. I have some bad news. But the good news is we're $100 million richer. The bad news is we lost our account with Wonder Bread. Hallelujah. Prayer has both human and divine purpose. We we need to pray, and it needs to be a physical thing, but we got to pray also in the spirit and be divine. We've got to pray in the Spirit. We've got to pray in tongues. We've got to stir up the gift inside of us. There's times where we pray and we pray the Word or we pray for the needs or we pray for blessings, but there's times where we have to simply pray in an utterance and intercede for others and pray to let God intercede because we don't even know really what to pray. We need to talk to the Lord. That's what prayer is. We're talking to the Lord. And we're communicating with God. He's divine. True prayer is always, watch this, true prayer always brings us to confession. It brings us to thanksgiving. It brings us to making our requests known to God. It it also includes interceding for others and praying for others. You know, I've noticed that if I pray for other people, it seems like uh, my problems go away. But if I'm always focused on my problem, oh, God, you got to do this, you got to do that, oh, God, I need you, uh, you know, it, it seems like you get frustrated. God's not hearing my prayer. Listen, take, take, it, take you out of it and start praying for somebody else and pray for God's will. The most valuable part of prayer is this. The experience of not just talking to God and telling Him what we need, but listening. If we can learn to pray and listen. Because you're praying for the answer and God's trying to answer you, but you keep on talking. You keep on telling Him all your needs and all your troubles and all things that you want, and you never listen when He gives you the answer. And if he does give you the answer, you don't want to hear the answer because you don't want to do what you need to do. Say amen. Amen. Now I'm going to share, just hang in here, just, I'm only making two jokes tonight. I think four is a little too much. Hallelujah. But this one's kind of fitting, so I, I want to use it. There were four Christians in the mission field, and in the mission field, they had lions, and this lion was hungry and angry, and he saw these Christian missionaries, and he went after them, and the missionaries started running, and they started crying out to God, yelling to God, Lord, please convert the lion. Make him a Christian lion. 
And they run and, and they ran and they ran and they ran and they ran. And the lions started to catch up and they cried out again, Lord, please convert the lion to be a Christian lion. And they were running and all of a sudden the lion stopped. And he kneeled down and he put his paws together. And he, he began to pray, God, thank you for the blessing. For this blessing I'm about ready to receive. Hallelujah. We need to give thanks to God for all of our many blessings. Thank you for this food. We're about ready to partake, Lord. Hallelujah. We should get into the habit of prayer because God listens. Pray because God listens. Pray because God listens and God tells us in His Word to pray without ceasing. Don't stop praying. Men ought to always pray. Men ought to always pray. The Lord is eager to bestow His gifts upon us. How many of you believe that? How many of you, listen, when you pray and you pray God's will, God wants to, He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you a promotion. He wants you to be used. In Matthew chapter 7, 11, the Lord says He gives gifts that are good for us. How many of you believe that God knows what's best for you? Lord, I pray your will because I don't even know what's best for me. If I pray what I think I need, it could be totally wrong. The Lord gives gifts that have a purpose, His purpose in mind, according to Matthew. We can discover God's character by studying the Word of God, the Bible. We can understand God's gift after we, watch, when we pray and we follow after the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will lead us. And to all knowledge and all truth. John 15, 7 says we can know what to expect from God when we pray. We can know what to expect when we pray. We should always pray and make it a habit. Why? Because it is our great need. We need it. Daniel, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 that he prayed three times a day. And Brother Travis, he prayed three times a day. He looked toward God. He prayed toward heaven. And he did it even when they changed the law. <clears throat> when they tried to change the law, they did change the law. He still continued to pray three times a day. <clears throat> he prayed three times a day even when they threw him in the lion's den. He looked up toward heaven. He didn't worry about the lions. He didn't worry about the circumstance. He says, I'm praying. If God be for me, then who can be against me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What weapon is formed against me? Hallelujah. When God's on my side, he's going to deliver me. If he's, if he's done with me, this is the way I'm going. Say amen. amen. <clears throat> we find that the great prophet Daniel prayed three times a day, no matter what circumstance. The three Hebrew boys, they prayed. They were praying to God. They wouldn't bow down to anybody else, even in the fire. And God showed up. We should always pray. We should pray confessions with a conscience, 1 John chapter 1, 9. We should pray when we stand in need of wisdom, James chapter 1, verse 5. When we pray, God, give me the wisdom that comes from heaven. I don't know what to do. This, I don't want to depend on my earthly body. I don't want to depend on this world and their wisdom. Lord, when I stand and pray, God, give me wisdom that comes from heaven because it's not like the world. I need you. Hallelujah. And when I pray, I want to confess. I want to have a conscience. I don't want to be immune from sin. Listen, I, I, I don't want to be immune from feeling the guilt of my sin. I don't want to get so used to sinning that, that, that I don't have a conscience anymore. Some people, they just sin, 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 so it doesn't even bother them anymore. James chapter 4, 7, and 8 says we should pray when we are tempted. 
by Satan to do evil things. Man, when we have temptation, pray. That's the time to pray. <coughs> David, you should have been praying. Hallelujah. Idle time is the devil's time. Amen. If you're not going if you're not going to go out and fight with your soldiers and you're going to stay home, at least look to heaven and pray. Keep you out of trouble. We should pray when our loved ones are experiencing pain and suffering or illness. James, James chapter 5, verse 13 through 18 says that, that, that if something's wrong with you, you pray. But, but if, if it's something that you need to call the elders of the church, then call the elders of the church. You know, some people, well, if they're supernatural and they're discerning, and they're, they'll know that I'm sick. And so if, if God wants them to pray, God will give them a dream, give them a vision. Give them a discerning spirit. No, the Bible says that if any is sick among you, you pray, or if you need, or call for the elders of the church so they can call on the name of the Lord, lay hands on you, anoint you with oil, pray the prayer of faith, call on the name of Jesus on your behalf. But you've got to call. You don't know how many times as I was a Bible study teacher in West Palm, how many times I heard people say, nobody came and prayed for me. Did anybody know you were sick? No, because you never told anybody. When should you pray? When you are in need of God's grace and God's help. Listen, when you need grace, when you need mercy, which for most of us is every day. That's why I said pray continuously, constantly. Pray without ceasing. Why? Because I'm constantly in need of grace. Prayer is powerful. It's so powerful, very powerful. And it's powerful whether you utter it out loud so everybody can hear you or you pray quietly in silence or if you shout out in declaration, if you groan, if you intercede, if you have well-crafted words, or just simple language. God hears you, and God responds to your prayers, no matter how you do it. Christians, we, listen, it's, how can you be a Christian without praying? How is it possible to live for God without praying. Prayer is like breathing. How can we live the Christian life without praying? Especially when the Bible says pray without ceasing. It's like live without breathing. Go ahead, live without breathing. The value, everybody say the value we need to get a hold of this. The value of persistent, constant prayer without ceasing. It's not because God can't hear you. It's not because we got to keep praying because God won't answer. God hears your prayers. We keep praying until we finally hear Him. Oh, glory. The Bible tells us in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe it that you might receive it, and it will be yours. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, the door will be open. Ask, you shall receive. But if we're not asking, then God's not going to respond, is He? Unless somebody else is praying for us, which sometimes we have to pray for other people because they don't know how to pray. They're not able to pray. They can't get to the, to the place where they can pray to God. We need to pray just like, like we're breathing, like every day is a new day. Every day is a new day in the kingdom of God. And we need to start every day, that gift that comes from God. We need to open it up with prayer. 
Lord, bless this day. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Thank you for giving me life. Oh, God, hallelujah, bless this day. Lord, I need you to anoint me and bless me so I, so I can get things done according to your will, Lord. Prayer doesn't change things. God changes things when he answers our prayers. Pray without ceasing. We need to de develop, develop, develop a habit of praying and don't break it. God yearns for our fellowship. Listen, remember the pattern of the tabernacle. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. We go to the altar because daily we need to repent. The lifestyle of repentance. Lord, I lay my life at the altar. Lord, take anything that is not like you. Not, listen, take anything that is ungodly. Take, purify me. Cleanse me. Lord, burn it out. Then let me go to the water and watch it. Let me check in the mirror and see what I need to fix. Let me change my garments before I go into the holy place and begin to read your word. Lord, I want to enter in and I want to partake of the bread, the show bread, and I want it to be sweet as honey. I don't want it to be bitter. <clears throat> when we eat God's word and we haven't come to the outer courts and put on the proper garment and wash and purify in repentance and give thanks and praise to God. What we're doing is when we get the word, it's bitter. I don't like it. It doesn't taste good. Why? Because I haven't went through the pattern of making things right so I have the right mindset, the right attitude so that I can receive the word so that it can taste good. Because if I'm not, if I'm not living it, it doesn't taste good. But if I can say amen to his word because I have giving God my life. Lord, I have laid down my life. Lord, I ask you to wash me, to cleanse me, to take out things that I don't need. Lord, I ask you to put new garments on. Lord, I need your mercy and your grace. Lord, I want to eat your word. I want to meditate upon it day and night. I want it to convert my soul. I want it to give me wisdom. I, I, I want it to lead me and give me direction. I want it to be a light. I want to get revelation from the candlestick. And Lord, I want to enter to the Holy of Holies. I want to, when I pray, I want to enter to the Holy of Holies where the Shekinah glory is at, where the fire at the mercy seat and the angels are protecting the mercy seat. And, and, and inside of it is the testimonies of what God can do, the miracles, the healings, the deliverance. Oh, God, how you have given us power and authority over the enemy, God, with your word, oh, God. And, Lord, how the commandments, oh, God, tells us how to live our lives, oh, God, and the testimony that you're going to take care of us, even in the wilderness, the manna from heaven comes down and you feed us and give us what we need, not what we want. And as we study prayer, we got to get into a habit of praying. True prayer. I, I really need God to help me. I really need God to understand I need him. I need him. I need direction. I need to hear what he wants. I need him to lead me. I need to know what his word means. I need to get revelation of his word. And I can't get revelation if I don't come in with thanksgiving and praise and let God change me and give him all the bad stuff and wash them away and give me new garments. That word is not going to be revelation. That word is not going to be sweet. That word is going to be bitter and there's the, the wrong fire 
fire is coming into the holy place and it's not going to be successful because it's not the fire from the altar of repentance and the altar of repentance is the fire that you take into the holy place to keep the lights keep the revelation going hallelujah glory to God you will be deceived if you don't have true repentance you will be deceived if you're not praying the right way if you're bringing in the wrong fire hallelujah glory to God you're going to be doing it man's way and not God's way hallelujah oh I wish I had a witness up in this place when we don't do it the way God wants us to do it it's going to be counterfeit it's not going to be working it's not going to be blessed we need to get into a habit we need to understand when we pray the Lord's prayer we want our daily bread not chicken hallelujah amen because we need that word we need that word that comes from heaven it says when you pray pray in this manner he didn't say repeat what I said pray in this manner hallowed be thy name in other words recognize who God is he's holy he sits on the throne he's in heaven He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the mighty God. He's our salvation. He's the sacrificed lamb. He is our rock. He is our refuge. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our salvation. He's our savior. He's everything. And so when we realize who we're praying to, he is the creator. He's the one that created. My God. He created. His spirit hovered over the earth and it started to move and then he spoke light and light came. My God, this is who we're praying to. We're praying to a God who spoke to the dust of the ground and formed man and breathed into his nostrils and created a man and he was a full grown man. And he took the rib of the man and made a woman. Fully grown. She wasn't a baby. He didn't have to wait until she grew up. When God created the heavens and the earth, he can create everything. Listen, he could create the mountains and the rocks to be as old as he wants it to be. Hallelujah. Well, the world is a billion years old. Well, no, God created it to seem that way. He can make it any way he wants. He can do it any way that he wants. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because he's the creator. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And not anything that was made was not made. Listen, it was made by him. So when we're praying, we got to have this revelation who we're praying to. We're not just saying words in the air. We're praying to a God who created everything. So when we pray, we pray believing. We ask what we're going to receive because I'm going to believe what I'm praying about. But see, the key is that we are always right with God. Lord, I go to the altar of repentance. I got to be purified. I got to be cleansed. I got to have the right attitude. I got to. I got to. I got to be according to your word, oh God. And and, and watch this. My motives got to be right. And I got to be in your will. It's got to be your will. If it's your will, my prayers will be answered. If I'm praying amiss, then he's not going to answer. If I'm praying outside his will, guess what? He's not going to answer. Let's stand. Lord, I ha He Lord help us. Lord help us, Lord. Oh God, Help us, Lord God. Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. God, when I pray, I am praying to the Almighty. I am praying to the Creator of all things. I am praying to someone that has all power to answer my prayer. My God, 
Let's get a hold of this. We are not just praying just to be praying. We are praying to the Almighty. We should not be surprised when we pray God heals somebody of cancer and God does it. It's, it should not be a shock to us. He created everything. He can do anything. He raised the dead. He raised himself from the dead with the spoken word. And we have his word and we can speak his word and our faith can be elevated. So when we pray, we're not just talking. We're not just going through the motions. We're praying like we believe God's going to answer. My favorite story in the Bible, I think, Acts 12, where Peter's in prison. He's in the stocks and bonds. He's got 16 guards watching him. They got him in the dungeon. They got shekels on him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They are really worried about this guy because when he prays, God hears. And there was a prayer meeting going on for this man. Hallelujah. And he's able to lay his head down and go to sleep peacefully not worried about tomorrow not worried about dying not worried about what's going to happen because he knows that he believes in God and that if God's in control hey whatever's going to happen it's going to be God's will the greatest story in the Bible I just I love this story where where they're praying and they don't even really believe what they're praying they're going through the motions but God still hears the prayers of the people and God dispatches an angel, and an angel comes, and the angel hits Peter and says, wake up. And guess what? Peter is so obedient, he thinks he's dreaming, but he's going to obey anyway. And we ought to be obedient even when, we're think, when we think it's a dream. Because we're so obedient that even if it's a dream, we're, we're obeying in the dream. So he obeys and he gets up and he puts on his sandals, he puts on his garments, and he begins to walk and he goes past all the 16 guards. And as they're leaving, there's a big iron gate. And the iron gate opened on its own accord, the Bible says. So it opens and he walks out in the street. He, he can't believe what, what's happening. He, he doesn't even think it's real. The Bible says he thinks he was dreaming. And he looked up. The angel was gone. So he went to his own prayer meeting. Went to his own prayer meeting. And he knocked on the door. And Rhoda, the damsel, came down. And she said, who is it? And he said, it's Peter, the one you've been praying for. She got so excited, she ran in and told all, everybody that was praying, hey, Peter's at the door, and they called her crazy. You're mad, woman. Hallelujah. Listen, you don't believe what you're, what, why are you going through the motion of coming to prayer meeting if you don't even really believe what it is that you're praying for? What a waste of time if you're coming to church just to be seen. You say, I was, I was praying for somebody. But you didn't even believe a word of what you were saying. And they came to the, he came to the prayer meeting, knocked on the door. She ran, told everybody, and they called her crazy, called her mad. Oh, we believe in angels. It must be his angel. Because we don't believe that God's going to answer our prayers. We don't believe God's able to answer our prayers. So you've got to be crazy or it's an angel. That sounds like Peter. So finally, they, they kept hearing the knocking on the door, so they thought, you know what? Maybe we'll at least go check it out. And they opened the door, and to their amazement, to their amazement, there was Peter. 
Folks, can you hear what I'm saying tonight? When we pray, we need to have a habit of prayer. And when we pray, we got to pray like we really believe it, that God is hearing us, that this almighty God who can do anything is going to hear our prayer and he will give us a testimony. We will have manna from heaven. We will have miracles. We will have signs and wonders. We will cast out devils. We will baptize people in Jesus' name. People will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We got to believe it when we pray that God's going to do it because it's His will, because it enhances His kingdom. It's God's will that we pray. How can we say that we're Christians and we don't even pray and pray that we believe what we pray? Pray without ceasing. I would that all men would lift up their holy hands without doubt, without wrath, and pray, believing that God is able to answer every prayer. Amen. I want this to sink in. I haven't watched Brother Travis's messages, messages yet on prayer, but, but let me tell you, I feel in the Holy Ghost. I feel in the Holy Ghost. God wants this church to learn how to really pray, not just, not just giving a, a list of what, what we want, but praying like we believe that God is actually listening and hearing us and, and, and that he will do that which we pray according to his will. You know, we get up here and we share testimonies of what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've been part of. We, we, we get up here and we share because we're trying to elevate people's faith so that they can receive what it is that they need from God. We need to have people who pray, who believe that God is going to do another miracle, that God is going to do another healing, that God is going to provide. Listen, he's going to provide for every need. Why, when you get to the mercy seat, why do we have inside the mercy seat the rod? Why do we have the commandments? Why do we have the manna, the pot of manna? It's to prove, to show, hey, God gives you the authority. God gives you his word, and he will do miracles. He will be there for you. In the desert, they had known 40 years. Forty years he provided food for them. Their shoes, their sandals lasted for 40 years in the desert. No one got sick for 40 years. Hallelujah. When we walk according to our faith and we believe, listen, we walk what we believe, we're going to see miracles. People are going to come to church. God is going to change their life. God is going to heal them. God is going to deliver them. We will see the church filled up once we start praying like we really believe it. And when we really believe it, when God tells us what to do, we go do it. Hallelujah. The problem is we pray and then God answers and tells us what to do and we make every excuse, hallelujah, not to do it. You pray for a revival and God says give. Well, I want revival, but I don't want to give. God, we pray for revival. God says, go find somebody to invite to church. Go give somebody a Bible study. Find somebody, hallelujah, to encourage. Do something for the kingdom. And we make every excuse. I want revival, but I don't want to have to do anything. I'm praying for revival so the pastor can stay busy. That's not how revival works. Revival starts when we all learn to pray. And when we pray, we listen, and then we do what God tells us to do. And then when there's a need, we all, what we all do, what the need needs. In other words, we all participate. We see the need, and we answer the call. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Revival's here. Revival's here. It's already here, but God's trying to get us to go just a little bit deeper. Pray, pray, pray. 
pray and pray like you believe it. Pray like you believe there's a God who hears. And then when God speaks, listen. Amen. I think that's the main ingredient, that we, 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 we forget the listening part. We all have our grocery list, our Christmas gift list. This is what I want, God. But if it requires me to do anything, uh, well, it's not that important. I want revival, but it, well, it's not that important. Because now it requires something for me. We all want revival. Somebody else has to do it. But revival works where the church gets involved. We're all inviting people to church. We're all praying for people when they come to the altar. We don't sit, that, we don't sit back and watch. Hallelujah. We all got to be praying. When the loss comes in, because I've been praying for the lost, now I'm invested. Now I want to get involved. Ah, Lord, I've been praying for the lost. Now they're here. Now they show up. Now I want to encourage them. I want to take them out to dinner. I want to take them out to breakfast. I want to go meet them for coffee. I want to see if I can give them a Bible study. I want to know if I can pray for them. I want to know if I can encourage them. Not talk about them. Not criticize them. Not judge them. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. We should be praying and we should be encouragers. We pray for the lost. We pray for revival. And when it comes, we ought to be excited. We ought to want to do everything that we can to keep them in the church. Oh, my God, let me go shake their hand. Let me show myself friendly. Oh, and let me just say something, folks. People here lately have contacted me and said, man, this is a nice church. People are so kind to me. People are so welcoming to me. People are so encouraging to me. That's what we need to be. Hallelujah. We're, we're going on the right path. We, we, we are headed that way. Let's keep going that way. And what happens is when we pray and we pray to God who listens and a God who is able, God will send people. And we got to be ready. We can't say one Sunday, oh, I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm tired. I, I don't want to be friendly. I don't want to. I don't have time to take him out to lunch. I don't have time to get with them this week. No, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to, to, to make them part of the family, to do something with them, to encourage them. And we should always, 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 when we're talking to somebody that comes to church, always lead them and speak positive of the leadership. Say, man, we got a good pastor. Even if I'm not a good pastor, say, I get hey, listen, we got a good pastor. Don't tell the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Convince yourself it's the truth. So you can say it. Because what I have learned, if you talk down about somebody, that is not going to help their spiritual walk. They're not going to listen to the preacher. They're not going to take the advice. And they're going to shut him out when he preaches the word. Oh, God. Hey, take the good qualities that we have and tell them about the good qualities. Hallelujah. Say amen. Amen. I have you standing. Let's come to the altar and let's pray. Let's really pray. Let's really pray. Let's, let's pray knowing that there is a God who can hear, who wants to listen. There is a God who says pray without ceasing. There is a God who wants to answer every prayer. He wants you to be involved. He wants you to pray with faith. Make my pastor a good pastor.
If he has any faults, Lord, give him strength. Give him the ability to do a better job in this area. Lord, I pray that you would anoint him, Lord, to be able to have wisdom. Pray, God, any defaults, any problems that he has, Lord, take them away and make him stronger and better than ever. Lord, my brother, my sister, make them better. Oh, encourage them, God, whatever they're going through. Lord, give them faith. Give them favor oh god change their life so they can become more more and more like you god that they can help save the sick they can help save the lost that they can come and be more involved and have more knowledge and more wisdom they can grow in the kingdom of god they can have grow in their gifting oh god lord jesus even if they're not everything they need to be god right now god let them learn to pray that they can get better that they can grow that they can be strong that they can be used more that they can win souls oh God they can become soul winners and be wise Oh, God, heal those that need to be healed because if they're sick, God, they can't do as much. Lord, heal them, heal them, heal their body, heal their mind, heal their emotions, heal, oh, heal their spirit. Lord, heal their finances, heal their family, heal their marriage, whatever it is that needs to be healed so they can increase, so your kingdom can increase, so that we can pray and we can believe and we can receive and we can do your will. Oh God, consistently, constantly, without pra, without ceasing, praying and believing. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Lord, when I pray, I want to pray. Oh God, I pray the angels. I pray the angels go up and receive their command from you and you dispatch them back down here. Lord, the Bible says that they ascend and descend. So we are sending them up so that you can send them back down to minister with us. I believe they're here. I believe it, Lord. Lord, I need help, God. I need help, God. Help me be stronger. Help me be more stable. Help me be wiser. Help me, oh God, anoint me. Lord, give me more gifts. Lord, use me for your greatest purpose, God. Oh God, hallelujah. Revival is here. Revival is here. How, how fast it grows, I don't know. How big the spark is, I don't know. The fire, how fast it will spread, I don't know. Ha, ha, ha. But I feel a fire. I feel a hatarraba. There's been a spark. There's a spark. There's been a spark. Oh, God. Hatarramahaya. Ha. Lord, let that spark catch on fire. Lord, let it become a flaming fire. Let it spread. Let it spread quickly. Not for my will, for your will, for your kingdom, for your glory. Lord, send people who believe it. Send people who believe it. Send people who want to be involved. Send people who, who want to pray and believe and see the works of your mighty hand. Lord, start sending people with the gift of faith. Send people... Lord Jesus, it will operate in your spiritual gifts. Send people who are bold to preach your word. Send people, Lord, who will evangelize and are not afraid to invite people and to give Bible studies. Lord, send people who can give. Lord, they can give their energy. They can give their time. They can pray. Lord, who have faith. Lord, send people, God, who can give to do whatever work you want to be done. Lord, send more gifted people. Lord, send people who can play music. Send people who can sing. Send people who know how to pray. Send people, Lord. Oh, God. Hata, send people that love people, send people that love you, 
<laughs> oh God, send people, Lord, that believe that you are real. <laughs> Oh, send people, Lord Jesus, that believe when they pray that the dead can raise. Lord, send people that believe when they pray devils can be cast out. Send people, God, who believe, Lord, when they pray, you hear and you answer. Oh, God, we already have some good people. But, God, Lord, you can send more good people. Oh, God, you've already sent some gifted people. You can send more gifted people. Lord, you already sent people who give. Lord, you can send more people who can give. Lord, I believe the prophecy. I believe the prophet who said that God is going to send a man who is like Rockefeller. Oh, God, send that person who has the money to be able to fulfill the vision and the dream that you have, oh, God, for your kingdom and your glory. Not mine, but yours, God. It's your dream. It's your vision. It's your church. It's your ministry. Oh, God. Lord, humble us. Humble us to be servants. Humble us, oh, God. Lord, to to not be selfless or to be selfish, but to be selfless. Oh, Oh God, whatever you have need tonight, if you pray, believe God will do it. Whatever your need is tonight, if you'll lift up your hands and you'll pray and pray to a God who is real, who is who can do anything. If you'll pray to that God right now, call on that name in Jesus' name. He will give you the victory. He will give you what you need. Hallelujah. If you'll just listen to do what he tells you to do. Come on, Nehemiah. Hallelujah. You got to do what God says to do. You can can't pray for an answer and then God give you the answer and then not receive the answer. I'm talking to somebody who's watching. They're watching live tonight or they're watching later sometime in life. God is asking you to stop being like Nehemiah and doubting. Just do what God tells you to do so that you can receive your healing. You can receive your miracle. You can receive your deliverance. Hallelujah. Come on. Do you, hey, we've been praying. Do you believe what you pray? Do you believe God can send people? Do you believe we can have revival? Do you believe? Listen, God said, I will send them, but you better be prepared to take them. If you're not ready to take them, then I'm not sending them. I'll send them to somewhere that they are ready to receive them. My God, I felt the Holy Ghost on that one. Did you ever stop to think that maybe God's not sending people here because we're not equipped to do what we need to do for them? Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Sister Carla. Where's Sister Carla? Oh, there you are. Number one, I want you to share the dreams and visions that you've been having. I think there's been two. And Sunday you said that it has begun. And then tonight the Lord is telling you something as well. People can't hear you, though. I'm sorry, I'm still learning my English, so. <laughs> God bless you all. Um, the first Sunday that we came here, um, I had a vision, and I saw an owl, and I saw the face of the owl, and then... Yeah, well, um, turn around, 
and then I saw an eagle. Later, God told me that this church started like the Nahuel, meaning of uh, knowledge. Then the eagle will be like like a revival. Yeah, but I'm stronger and yeah. uh, this past Sunday when I was praying here, I saw the eagle, the same eagle um took me by it. Yeah. Yeah, God told me it the church started to fly. So we passed the first the first <laughs> now we are in the second step. <laughs> and now God told me to the pastor to anoint the people's hands. Because when I don't know who prayed for me when I was here. And um, when huh? uh, yeah. Okay. When he finished to um, pray for me, um, I keep feeling like his hand, but I feel it in my spirit, not physical. And God told me, tell the people, tell the pastor to anoint the people's hands because every time they're going to pray for someone, they're going to leave a mark in them. So they will come and looking for what them is. Praise the Lord. I don't know if we have any more oil back there. Let's check because I may run out. Amen. So I want you to line up. Amen. And we're going to pray and anoint every hand. And we are going to, every time you pray for someone, amen, your hands are anointed. Hallelujah. The church is starting to soar in the spirit realm. Revival has already started. But now it's going to take people getting involved. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me give you your other hand, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Brother Miguel, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, you're a healer, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Amen. I want everyone to turn around and look right here. Brother Mike was here last Wednesday, came in from Chicago, came up to get healed, uh, healed for his wrist, received the gift of the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave him the utterance. He was here because of his mother, Mrs. Fritz, who is here tonight, who was in the hospital just a couple weeks ago. But God has touched her body. Amen. We give God all the glory. We give God all the praise. Hallelujah. He hears our prayers. 
And when we pray believing that he can do it, he will do it. Amen. You have a praying son. You have two now. Gary, he's always praying, always sending me prayer requests. He believed God was going to do it, and God did it. Amen. And we're so glad to see you out and about. Amen. Wow, what a God. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Amen. And you are so welcome here anytime. Amen. If you need anything, just let us know. Hallelujah. But you got a great son now. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. And June, June is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost soon. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Continue to pray for Brother Vinny. Uh, Brother Vinny is doing better. Uh, he is he is more alert. He's got both eyes open. He's sitting up. He's doing more activities. He's eating better. He's uh, responding even more. You can understand more words now. So he's coming along. So just keep praying. God's, God's going to do it. Amen. Amen. And it's God's timing, not ours. Amen. If it was me, he would already be up and walking and hallelujah. But amen. God has a purpose and a reason for everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Continue to pray. Sister Marcia will be traveling, going to St. Martin. Uh, she's going to be part of a prayer conference. Amen. And so keep her in your prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep her safe. Amen. God bless you. Show yourself friendly. Greet one another in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. Hallelujah.